Hey there everybody and welcome to the channel. I'm your host Pubo Rama and in today's video we are going to be talking about all the deals and discounts this week in Grand Theft Auto 5 and Line. As you'll notice a large large some of these discounts are on flying vehicles. Whether we've got planes or helicopters there are a lot of them on sale down to the very simple fact that hangers are also on sale and you'll be earning an extra wad of cash doing smugglers run sale missions this week which is pretty dang sweet. I'm actually really happy playing are on sale because I got a lot of cash sitting in my broke to billions account and I don't actually own some of these planes so I can tell you I will be owning the majority of them after this week. Now unfortunately because all these planes are on sale Rockstar kind of left the cars in the dust we only have one car on sale. But nonetheless, I'm going to be giving you a detailed review on all these vehicles and you will know what is worth the price in my opinion and what isn't just giving you a basic overview. Let's start off with the hangers themselves. Now, I think there's like five hangers in total. We've got two at LSIA. The one I own is the cheapest by far. I'm not sure how much money it costs, but if you're going to buy a hanger and just being cheap, get the cheapest one. There's no real advantage or disadvantage to any of the hangers. The reason I bought this one is, first of all, I don't really care about the low uh, military level clearance access. I mean, sure, you can drive into the military base and not get cops, but how many times do I find myself driving into the military base? Not many, so it really doesn't matter too much to me. So I just bought the cheapest hanger over here. The next one is $915,000. Don't buy this, especially when you get a cheaper one right here. And then all the way in the military base, we have three. $1.59 million, $1.95 million, and $1.251 million, which is Fort Zancudo hanger, 3497 Buy this hanger. There, there's no reason to buy these other two, unless you're really bad with money skills and you just want to show off that you bought a hanger to who, your mom? It doesn't matter. Buy the cheapest hanger. You're going to save money, a lot of money as well, 700 grand. And I would actually suggest to get this hanger this week at least because, I mean, hey, they're on sale and it's going to cost you the same amount of money to buy this hanger on sale than it would, I think, for around the one I own. So yeah, get it. Definitely a good deal, especially because you do get that low clearance access, which means that you don't get cops going into the military base you can get a laser for free. It's pretty dang sweet. The main reason why I have mine in LSIA is because I'm normally in the city, so I just think it's a bit more efficient to own my hangar inside the city. With that aside, let's start off with the cars that are on sale this week. First of all, we have the SC1. I'm pretty sure this is based off the BMW i8. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's like BMW's only supercar. I guess they've got a couple old supercars like the M1, but if we're talking about modern supercars, this is the only one that rings a bell, and it kind of looks like it as well. Now, it's not a great car. Now, to be fair, it is on the super wheel spin, so you can get it for free. And I mean, hey, for a, a free car, especially a $1.6 million supercar, it's not a bad deal. I'll always take a free car. I would easily put this in my garage and fully upgrade it. But it's just not a great car. First of all, it looks kind of weird in my personal opinion. And as well, it's not very fast. It only goes about 125 miles per hour. And it also has pretty average handling for a supercar in its class. So overall, there's no real reason to own it unless you get it for free which is, I guess, why Rockstar put it in the super wheel spin. They were like, maybe now people will get the car. But yeah, seriously, don't feel bad if you don't get it this week. It's nothing special, and I wouldn't ever suggest to buy it. Next up, we do have a really special car, and this is the Infernus Classic. Now, the reason it's special is, to me personally, I love a Lamborghini. And this is based off of one of the most iconic Lamborghinis of all time, the Diablo. I'm not exactly sure which model of Diablo it's based off of. All I do know is that it's not the Diablo GTR as the headline are pop-up, but that makes it just that much cooler. Pop-up headlights are my jam. I love 90s cars because of that. This car is also pretty fast, especially when it comes to the sports classics racing scene. Pretty good, although there's not many people racing in GTA these days anymore. Anyway, I just say that this is a great driver's car. If you like sports classics and specifically Lamborghinis, it's just an amazing looking vehicle. As well, you'll notice that its interior, if we just kind of park the car here and don't let the door close, it's actually got quite a detailed interior, which is very rare when it comes to Rockstar. The entire interior is actually detailed, which is honestly epic. So overall, I love the look of the Diablo GTR, one of my favorite looking sports classics in the game. I already own this vehicle. To get your hands on it this week, it's
it's going to take you three wins, finishing second place or first place in the LS car meet. So definitely not super easy because it is three days in a row you have to do this. But hey, it is a pretty sweet car. And at the end of the day, if you don't get it, you can always buy it. It's only nine hundred and like eighty thousand dollars. So it's it's a pretty sweet car. And I, I don't know. I, I love the Infernus Classic. I always will. I already own it, as I said. But uh, yeah, so if you like this car, go get it in the LS car meet with the two free vehicles out of the way. Let's actually get into the discounted vehicles at this point. First of all, we have the Dinka Jester Classic. Now, even though this is with the classic name, it is still a sports car. And well, I mean, we all know what this sports car is based off of. It's the Supra. I absolutely love the Supra. It's an amazing vehicle in real life, and it's just as amazing in Grand Theft Auto. It's got pretty good handling for the sports class. I don't think it has great top speed to what I remember. Nothing like the Pariah or anything like that, but you'll notice it does have really good grip, and because of that, it actually has a pretty decent lap time overall when it comes to the sports class. I just love the look of this vehicle. Normally, it's like $690,000. This week, it's $470,000. Either way, it's a pretty cheap vehicle to buy as it is, and the fact that it's only $470,000 this week means that you can very, very easily earn this vehicle. I mean, literally 40, 50 minutes of grinding. You can just do payphone hits and get your hands on this vehicle with chump change. So I would highly suggest to get the Dinka Jester Classic. It's an amazing looking vehicle and it's a Supra. How can you not want to own one in Grand Theft Auto Online? Next up, we have the Swift. I'm not going to fly it because there's no point to fly it. And that's also the same for the Kanata. The Swift normally comes in at a price tag of $1.5 million. This week, it's $750,000. The Kanata is normally $1.8 million. This week, it's $1.5 million. Wow, you're saving $300,000. At least the Swift is half off. The Kanata, they're really not giving you any discount. Let's talk about why I don't think these two vehicles are worth the price. First of all, neither of them have missile protection. So if I pulled out an RPG and shot it at either of these two helicopters, they'd be blown up in one hit. Second of all, that's it. That, that's, there's nothing else to say about them. They're helicopters that don't have missile capabilities, so they have no weapons as well. Well, I mean, they're fast. The Kanata is actually the fastest flying vehicle in the game. But you know what? The biggest problem I have with these helicopters are is that my Sparrow, I can literally just do this and boom, my Sparrow spawns right behind me. Not only that, but it has flares and it has missiles and I can instantly spawn it in whenever I want. And every two minutes, I can continue to do that. The Kanata, if I wanted to call in a personal vehicle, would probably spawn over here, which sucks. I hate the fact that when you own a helicopter in the personal vehicle tab over here, to call it in, it's just going to spawn across the map somewhere you have to go over to the nearest beach or takeoff area. It's kind of cringe, and it's one of the biggest downsides I have, and the main reason why I will never justify buying the Kanata or even the Swift, which is on sale, is because my Sparrow does everything these helicopters do. And yeah, sure, this might be the fastest helicopter, but the amount of time it takes you to drive and go get it defeats the whole purpose of having that speed in the first place to what I personally personally see. Again, it has no flares or anything else going for it. There's no reason to buy this helicopter. With the two useless vehicles out of the way, in my personal opinion, we actually have a helicopter that is definitely worth the deal this week. I would highly suggest to get the F-100 if you don't. There's a couple reasons why. First of all, the F-100 is a lot of money off. Normally, it's $3.1 million. It's $1.8 million, which is a huge discount. But even better than that, you have barrage missiles, which are sweet. I mean, let's say uh, this is Bobby McDooferson in front of me, this propane tank, right? Yeah, no more propane tank. You can fire, I think it's seven missiles basically instantly, which is pretty insane. If there's anybody on the road you're trying to absolutely nuke, you can very easily just, yeah, ruin their day. And the best part is you can fire homing missiles while you're on the barrage missile cooldown. So basically I can shoot at these cops and then go into my barrage missiles, shoot all the missiles, which I nuke the cop with, and then go back to homing missiles and then go back to barrage missiles. Yeah. And then go back to homing missiles and then go back to barrage missiles. Yeah. Basically it's an insane helicopter. And the fact that it's so cheap, there is no reason not to buy it this week. I would highly suggest to get your hands on the F-1 Hunter. It's a very fast helicopter. It has flare capabilities as well. It might even have bombs. Yeah, it does have bombs as you can see, which let's say the stinky helicopter, or not helicopter, stinky little plane over here, well, you can absolutely bomb the crap out of it. So overall, I think that the F-1 Hunter is just an amazing deal. Buy it. 
because, uh, yeah, you don't want to miss this chance to get it for half off. That is such a huge amount of savings. I should probably call Lester because the cops are not very happy with me for the amount of uh, chaos and destruction I have caused. So that's all the helicopters dealt with. One really good deal and two not so good deals. Over towards the planes, I'm not going to fly the Swift Deluxe, or not the Swift Deluxe, the Luxor Deluxe, because there's no point to. It's normally $10 million, and this week it's $7 million. It's still the most expensive vehicle in the game, basically, even with that discount. There's no reason to buy it. I mean, unless you want to show off, but I shouldn't really have to give you a reason to buy it. You can go over towards the uh, corner of the map right over here, and a normal Luxor will spawn or inside this hangar every single time you go to the airport, which defeats, in my opinion, the whole purpose of trying to get this plane I mean it's just a basically show off vehicle so I guess if you want to show off you have a lot of money buy it apart from that there's really no reason now we come to the cool vehicles the first one is the Tula and as you'll notice well my wing isn't broken it's just supposed to be like that the Tula is a VTOL plane which is really weird because it's a propeller plane yeah, I'm not sure if this is based off a real plane. I'm not sure because, yeah, it'd be kind of weird to design a plane like this. But either way, it's really cool because what you can do is fly it like a helicopter and then just, you know, turn the wing forwards and fly like a normal plane. That is so cool. Now let's talk about the strengths and disadvantages of the Tula. Now one great thing is that when you put it in the hover mode, you can just drop bombs right over anybody. So unlike a lot of the uh, planes in this game that kind of struggle to drop their bombs efficiently, you can just drop your bombs directly above you with the Tula, which is great. As well, the Tula can land in water. Yeah, that's pretty dang sick. Watch this, just gonna cut off the throttle. And there you have it, we are in the water with the Tula. There's not many planes you can do that with, especially a VTOL plane that can land in the water. Just an absolutely amazing ability of this vehicle. But with that aside, let's now talk about the downsides of the Tula. First of all, it's very expensive. Normally, this vehicle costs $3.9 million. It's still $2.7 million, which is a very expensive price tag for a vehicle that, well, really doesn't have much going for it apart from that gimmick. Like, yes, it's nice to do missions with, but I can also just use a Trador and do a lot of missions. The Tula only has explosive capabilities when it comes to the bombs. It still has no anti, uh, you know, missile countermeasures or anything like that, although I should point out that you do have a Jado rocket boost, which is a jet-assisted takeoff. Pretty dang sweet. But again, I just don't really see a reason to own the Tula. I, I just... I can't justify dropping $3 million on a plane that doesn't have missiles. All you have is a machine gun, and it's not even that good of a machine gun. It's not explosive, it's just a puny little machine gun. So yeah, personally, I wouldn't suggest to buy this plane unless you really want to get your hands on a VTOL, but it is a unique vehicle. But it's more of a gimmick than really a plane I'd ever suggest to buy. Now, the Molotov is a very sweet plane. This is based off a Sabre in real life, a Russian fighter, and I absolutely love the look of this jet. It is normally $3.6 million. This week, it's $2.5 million. That's a pretty decent discount. $2.5 million for this type of jet is not bad at all. First of all, the Molotov flies really fast. And it may not have an explosive machine gun like the Laser or any other, you know, type of jet like the Hydra, but it does have missiles. And these missiles are non-stop firing, so that it is a pretty big advantage over other vehicles. For example, like the Laser, the Hydra, or the Rogue which is a huge advantage in my opinion. As well, you do get flares, which means any missiles are gonna be diverted. In fact, you can see that my missiles were literally diverted already just by those flares. It is kind of funny how that works, but yeah, uh, it, it is crazy. Overall, I think that the, uh, the Molotov is just a great deal. The fact that you can get it for pretty dang cheap and the fact that it's such an effective fighter jet, I think is a great deal. Plus, it's just so cool looking. I think that this is one of the coolest looking planes in the game. So overall, really good deal. I'd suggest to buy it if you have the money. And yeah, let's break into the final vehicle, the most useless of the bunch, which is the Bombushka. I don't really need to say much about it. It's a big, slow plane. If you have a lot of friends, it can be really fun to use. But apart from that, I would never suggest to buy it because it's a lot of money. Let me check how much money it is. Normally, the Bombushka is $4.4 million. It's still $3 million, even with the discount. And, like, 
what's the point of it? It's not only one of the slowest flying vehicles in the game. Look at how slow I'm flying. I could probably walk faster than this. Okay, obviously not. But in all seriousness, sure, it has flares. So you at least have some missile protection, but the pilot itself has no missiles. This plane is huge. You can't drop any missiles. You do have bombs. I guess that's cool. I can do some carpet bombing. Yay, look at that, guys. I can drop bombs. But seriously, it's just a useless vehicle. Don't ever buy the Bombushka. It's slow, it's pointless, and yeah, there's not much else to say. I mean, literally, we have covered so little distance this entire time. Our speedo, well, I don't actually have a speedo, but there you go. It says we're going about 90 miles per hour. That's pretty lame. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video, but either way, I wouldn't ever suggest to buy the Bombushka. So, the vehicles that we talked about that were actually worth the price. Well, we've got the Molotov, I think that's a great deal, and the F1 Hunter and the uh, Jester Classic. Apart from that, well, I'd all say those are down to your personal preferences and what you think are worth the money. But hopefully you enjoyed today's video, and at the end of the day, it's Grand Theft Auto Online. So if you got enough money for all of them, indulge yourself, it doesn't really matter. I'm not the one that cares if you spend your money or not. In fact, I'm probably going to be buying the Tula, even though I said not to, just because I want to own it. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video, and let's crash the Bombuska! Speed! Oh my god, this is the lamest vehicle ever. Oh my god. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.